the last hurrah for a week. I'm gonna be gone. So I'm going to use the Brazos tonight. We're gonna actually going to utilize its smoking and its little uh, little grill section. We're gonna reverse sear some ribeye. Um, I'm gonna use the Kamado. I'm gonna make some Hasselback potatoes uh, with prosciutto, mild cheddar, goat cheese, chives. So then we're gonna be good. We're also gonna toss some shrimp on there, a little surf and turf going on tonight. And um, that's it. So we're gonna fire them two guys up and um, get her busy. I figured I'd actually do a couple sides. Um, my steaks are gonna be pretty straightforward. Now I am gonna be real here real quick. The, um, I took out the wrong pack of steaks. <laughs> So they are not my chef cut the steaks. This is basically, they looked like it because I stuffed this in one of them. So the package looked thicker than I thought. That was basically my end cut. These are gonna, these were gonna be my um, steaks and possible for grind or whatever. That was my, my end, of the, end of the roast when I was butchering it up. But whatever, we're gonna persevere. Um, you can reverse sear thin steaks. Um, smoke them a little bit lower, gives a little more flavor in there, and you smoke them a little less time. You don't bring that temperature to up. So when you drop them, you can still throw them over some flames, get a nice crust on them, and not overcook the hell out of them. So we're going to do it. But, um, and I'm even going to cook that heel, because um, why not, right? But uh, real quick, we're just gonna bang this through. Figured I'd actually show some sides. Like I said, I, I never really, um, you guys never really see the sides. I'm, I'm usually only focused on the protein because in all honesty, I think that's kind of what, um, you know, everybody cares about, you know, meat, man. But um, I get a lot of people asking me about, oh, how'd you, what about that side? Or what about my, what about the mushrooms? What about that? So I figured what the hell, let's do some sides tonight since I am just doing some steaks. Tonight, I'm just more so um, wanting to take advantage of the uh, versatility of that offset, man figure why the hell not so I think it's gonna work pretty good pretty good so and then the Kamado of course you know that does its thing man things always work good so let's do this real quick prep time there's our steaks this one you know I don't I'm not even gonna do anything to it honestly I'm just gonna cook it and um, I'll have it it'll be in the fridge for um, sandwiches or whatever the next day for the kids so we're not gonna do anything to that guy this guy right here I, some of you guys are probably gonna cry when I do this, but this is how I do my ribeyes. There's plenty of intermuscular fat. These are primes. These things have nothing but flavor in them, man. I don't need all that. This is more I gotta cut off when they're on the plate and I gotta eat them. Plus this is gonna go into my base sauce anyway, so. I'm just gonna take all the silver off, expose some of it around the edges. I went a little deep on that, but whatever. That's just gonna burn. And that's it. There's one ribeye, ready to go. This guy right here, do the same thing. Again, that's going in my base sauce. And I'm just gonna trim this down a little. Just to expose some of that stiffer stuff underneath. Plus, when you're cooking them, it stops the steaks from going like this. Like if you're using a, doing a strip and you don't trim all your fat off, at least take it and give it a score on the edge, you know? Cause that way, if you're cooking on high heat, not so much on the reverse here, but if you drop it in on a high heat, the reason why your steak will curl up is because of that fat band down here. It's that fat band that's lifting your steak up. So that's how you get the little bowl steak. You know what I'm saying? Real hard to sear a bowl steak. And that's it. There's our ribeyes. Ready to go? Ready to go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna toss these on my sheet over here. And grab a paper towel. Get some of this off of there anyway. 
And my steaks, I am just doing some uh, some of this, what I have left. I got another pound coming. I ordered a pound and a pound of another blend they have. Uh, what the hell's the name of it? Um, a Carver, something Carver. Um, it's like a steakhouse kind of blend, you know, just for beef. Um, I want to check out. And I have a, a gallon and a half of that buffalo sauce coming too, man. It's It sold me. It seriously did. Stuff's fantastic, man. So I'm just going to give this a little love of the salt and pepper. Rub it in there, pat it in there. This one's my steak. I like a nice crust on it. I might as well use the rest of it, right? Here, why not? Let's get it on these edges a little bit. It's not enough to finish anything, so. There we go. Man, that didn't last long. Good stuff, guys. Seriously, good stuff. All right. That's that for that. Our steaks are ready to go. I'm gonna let them sit. We're gonna let them sweat that. Sweat that rub in a little bit. Put these guys off to the side. Now, I'm using yellows. Yukon Golds. Little guys, man. So nobody here eats a ton of pepper, a ton of potato, uh, unless it's french fries. Uh, I'll, I'll tear them down. But um, I found with Hasselbeck, I like to have a good balance of what I'm stuffing in it to the potato. So I think a good medium size, especially a Yukon, yellow potatoes, they're awesome for it, man. They're super buttery, you don't even need to add any. We're going to hassle back them, we're gonna throw them on the Kamado for a little bit, and then we're gonna do some mild cheddar cheese, some rolled prosciutto, some goat cheese, and we're gonna cycle that through, and then we're gonna hit them on the top with some fresh chopped chives. Damn good, man, damn good. So Hasselbeck potatoes. Seriously, the easiest way to do it is to oh, tear the kitchen apart. Is to get two spoons, the same diameter, if I can find it, there it is. Just like that. Line your potatoes up you'll be good to go. So what I like to do is because when I put them on the grill, you get that nice crusty spot. So what I like to do here, let me see if you can see me real quick. Well, this is not necessary. I just prefer it like this. I just take, I flatten the bottom out. For one, it keeps my potato honest, but two, when it's on the grill, you get that nice crusty, crusty part. So when you're cutting through your potato, you get all that creaminess, all your toppings. And then at the bottom, you have that Almost like that French fried potato kind of taste at the bottom. I just, I just like it, man. So that's what we're gonna do. Very little, just enough to square the bottom off. I'm gonna do that to all of them before we hassle back them. Hey, this one's a wonky bastard, man. Here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna do this side just like that. Out of work, beautiful. All right, so now we're gonna take these guys, just like so. Oh, pushed it too hard, sorry. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Just like that, take our knife, cut right to the spoons. These guys are a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna keep them around a quarter inch. It's easier to use if you have a, um, man, I don't even know what they're called, but the knife, you know, with the little slots in them, so the potatoes actually slide off of them, but I'm not gonna dirty two knives for six cuts in a potato, you know what I'm saying? So just like that, and then as you cook them, they're gonna open up. Everything's gonna open up, and it's gonna give us little slots that we can stuff all sorts of goodness in, you know what I'm saying? 
So we're gonna do the same thing to this. Try the cowl to not cut my fingers off. Guess it would have been easier just to grab the other knife, huh? All right, so there's two of them done. Let me bang these other two out. We got them all cut. So now this right here is two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of pepper, a tablespoon of oregano, a teaspoon of granulated garlic, a teaspoon of chopped garlic, a teaspoon of granulated onion, a teaspoon of uh, chopped onion, a, what the hell else is in here? Um, a teaspoon of thyme, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and a half teaspoon of celery seed. So, it's like a, a garlic herb meth, man. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna put on these guys. And I'm actually gonna hit my shrimp with these after I little, I'm gonna add a little cayenne to this same exact thing for the shrimp. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the potatoes here and I am just going to put a drop on each one, best I can. Take my glove, roll them around, get it everywhere. Coat that whole potato with oil. That's grapeseed oil that I'm using right now. All my avocado oil is still out of stock, but that grapeseed oil actually works really good too. And it's, it's good for you. It's got a pretty decent uh, smoke point. It's actually pretty decent oil, man. Not at all mad about it. All right, so now let's hit them. We're gonna season these up. The salt in here is gonna help keep the skins crispy. Um, we are just going to move them around, throw a little rub in the pan, and just kind of toss them. Use, let that oil work, man, since it's all gonna stay on there anyway. All that flavor on that skin, it's gonna be good. Same thing with this guy. Just making sure, gets everywhere. Just like so. Do a fresh coat on the top. Spread some love over here. Get it all on the bottom. That's where it's all gonna get crispy down there. Plus potatoes love salt. No, they do. No, they do. All right. That's it. So. That's that. Now, like I said, I'm going to actually cook this and I'm just going to salt and pepper that because it's gonna be for sandwiches. I don't know what kind of sandwiches or what, so I'm just gonna salt and pepper that piece right there. And I'm gonna to toss it on the pit with everything else. But um, I'm gonna let these hang out. I'm gonna put my steaks in the fridge for a little bit and we're gonna get out there and uh, light the pit. I never like to season my shrimp until I'm right about to cook them. Um, especially if there's salt in the rub, they will dry out a shrimp like so fast, man. Especially when the shells are off of them. So um, I'm going to do that right before we get it going. Um, they're thawed out, that's it, they were frozen. So, like everything. But um, that's it, let's go light these pits up. All right guys, let's get her lit. So I did get, uh, did even get my gasket on, you can see. So, nice seasoning, eh? Look at how that all turned out. Man, it's beautiful inside there. Nice, dark, you just look slippery, you know what I mean? So, all right, we're gonna open this guy up. Open this guy up, sides open. Everything's aspirated, good to go. We're good to go. So, 
take our take our half time here. I want to use some cold for my steak searing. on up and I'm gonna shove two tumbles in here like so like so put this guy over here there we go nice all right let's get the uh, persuader out watch out measly fire get her going and her going I'm gonna let them guys go. And let's come on up here now. Right there. Oh, look at that. Man, that's some pro level angle right there, guys. <laughs> All right. Still got some poles in here. I don't know how, considering I don't even have the bottom vent on the bottom vent block, but when I snuffed to the top, it snuffed the coals out, so. Not quite sure. This is from the uh, chicken wings? I think it was the chicken wings the last time I cooked in it. So, I'm going to... Ah, I'm just gonna put the rest of that in there, perfect. I'm not even gonna have an open bag of coal when I go on vacation. It's awesome. It's all working out. I'm gonna leave this side over here for my oh shit zone, just in case. I'm not gonna put a deflector in, just in case I wanna knock some, uh, some coals around when I do the shrimp and things like that. So we're just gonna go old school with it. Get it just like so. Another one in here, just like so. And again, put the persuader on it. Fire. All right. All right, so I'm gonna let get this go. Let me open this up just in case I forget. I'm gonna let get this thing burning real nice. And we got our, uh, our half stack over here burning real nice dual fires and uh we're gonna get them up i'm gonna toss some oak in this guy and uh we'll get our i'm only gonna do 225 on this guy um normally i reverse here at 250 i know a lot of people reverse here at 225 but i just you know steaks i like a little smoke i don't like them over smoked you know what i mean so but since they are thin like i said we're gonna do that i'll do 225 in this guy over here i'll toss them in I'm gonna only take them to like 105, 110, something like that. Um, it will not take long for the fire to get them to temp, but I want enough time to where I can get that crust I like, you know what I'm saying? Shouldn't be too hard, especially with the location of the grill grate on this thing seems pretty close especially once i got a nice fire in there it should rip pretty good man and it should sear some steaks awesome but this way it leaves me some wiggle room in case i'm wrong you know what i'm saying so probably take them right around there 105 something like that so um be plenty of smoke on them thin snakes and uh it'll it'll get it past that point to where you know anything will tighten up anything like that plus they're they're prime ribeye so you just you know Unless you cook them to 150 degrees, you're pretty hard to screw up a ribeye like that. But, um, all right, we're going to get these going, get them up to temp, and let's cook some meat. All right, guys. Our half, our half time is ready. Get our fire in there. Just like so. Awesome. Let me rake them in a little. Yep. 
Beautiful. Just like that. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna let some air in this. I close that for when I dump the um, dump the coals in. They just don't come tumbling out. You know what I'm saying? So. All right, I'm gonna let this get going a little bit more. We're gonna get our opener. Yes, we got some uh, nice clean pieces. No bark today, so I'm not gonna wait for it to clean up. I wanna get them in there, get some air at them, get a nice blue smoke going, get our meat in there, you know what I'm saying? So, picked out a couple of real nice, real nice clean splits, man. So I'm going to toss both of these guys right in there, right off the bat. Going long ways, keep that airflow going, you know what I'm saying? Wiggle, wiggle, just like that. So I'm going to give these a few minutes, let them catch, let them get a nice, nice flame to them. You'll be able to tell, you know, that smoke's not billowing anymore. Then I'll close the firebox door down, but I will leave this open. And then I will close the chamber down and uh, get some convection going. Get some heat rolling in there and get the pit up to 225. So just for reference, I'm not trying to make this video long. I know the last ones have been long, long, but there's been a lot of details. So I'm going to be, I'll, I'll try to trim this down, but I just wanted to show you. <coughs> ooh, ooh, right in my face. See, nice, nice burn on them logs, man. They let right up. They're burning clean. They got nice fire. You get flames like that, you know you're getting some clean smoke. Especially when you open up your exhaust. I forgot. But uh, I'm going to keep this guy open here for a minute. Just so I know my smoke is clean coming out of that guy. And uh, then I'll close that off. And um, once the temps get up a little bit, I'll start toning it in. Get it out of the 225. So, And then uh, the KJ over here. Here's the Kamado, sorry, I'm used to saying it. Um, she's got a nice burn going, nice and slow. Didn't rush it. Um, I'm going to get it sprayed into that, close that lid, let that thing even out, and the potatoes are gonna go on there. Because the potatoes take a little bit. And in all honesty, you can actually cook the potatoes a little bit ahead of time, because then you can get them stuffed, you can get them situated, and then you can throw them back on for the finish. So you don't have to worry about the timing on the potatoes. It's best just to get them on there, get them cooked, it won't hurt anything if they sit on your counter for, you know, an extra 20, 30 minutes or something like that. Then you can get them stuffed and finish them off. You know what I'm saying? So best to do that than have your meat ready and be like, damn, potatoes aren't done. So, all right, I'll be back. All right, guys. So this guy's heating up. She's just coming up to 225. Um, I'm actually going to be doing my um, um, uh, whiskey beef mushrooms and onions on the grate in there in my cast iron figured what the hell might as well just do it all on this thing um got some beautiful this beautiful smoke look at that oh it smells so good man this guy right here she is rolling up to 350 so we're gonna get our hasselbacks on right now so let's do that first because these are gonna take a hot minute I'm gonna throw these right over here. Like so. Make sure there's some love on them. And that's it. We're gonna let them guys just go for a little while. Now you'll notice that they'll start, they'll start spreading out, they'll start opening up, things like that. And um, I'm gonna take them right to their soft. So, just take a sharp knife, stick it in one of the edges, you know, one of the nubs. If it comes out easy, they're ready to eat. So, we're going to let them roll. Now, over here, real quick, I'm going to keep this short. I'll tell you everything that I put in the mushrooms, but we don't need to uh, go through the whole cook. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, this video is going to get longer than the one yesterday, man. So we're gonna take our iron. I'm just gonna throw it right on there. I'm gonna let that oil heat up. 
And then I'm going to toss my mushrooms and onions in there. I'm going to get them nice, you know, nice and loosened up, nice and, nice and soft. Let the onions get translucent. Then I'm going to hit it with some whiskey. We're going to flambe it. We're going to burn that stuff right out of there. And then we're going to add some beef stock to it, some garlic to it. And uh, um, that's it. We're just going to let them cook down. They just, you know, they start cooking down and all that stock and that whiskey and, and all that good stuff. And um, they are awesome with some ribeyes. So and they're even going to be better since they cooked over fire. So, all right. All right. We're holding nice at 225, even with me messing with the firebox lid. So we're good. So first off, let's do this. All nice and hot in here. Get our mushroom and onions in. Just like so. Man, who said this wouldn't be handy? Come on, you guys. Got it all out here, man. Run away. Shoulder down. Shoulder down. All right. I'm going to let them go for a minute. Let's get our steaks on. See, even with me messing with the lid, we got a nice 225. We got a beautiful roll going on. This guy is going to stick right here. I put it in the big one because everybody else here likes their steaks a little more done than I do. I know I've had quite a few compliments or comments, I guess, on my steaks saying that's way too rare. Well, you cook them how you like them and I'm going to do the same. Especially when they're thin. Thick steaks, I like a medium. Little light medium. Thin steaks, I like a rare, man. Simple as that, so. But anyway, check it out, man. We cooking. So I'm gonna get these. Oh, man, beautiful. Awesome. Tongs. The only barbecue tool you need. All right, I'm gonna let these go. Got the steaks going. We got the Hasselbecks going. They're rolling nicely at 350 in here. This thing's holding beautifully, even without my damper situation down there. I don't know how, but a little bit of charcoal, so it should work pretty well. So we're holding nice at 350. We're gonna let them guys just go. And uh, in a minute here, we're gonna add some whiskey to them, uh, mushrooms and onions, flambe that stuff, add a little beef stock, and then we're just gonna let them simmer in there, um, best we can anyway. It's gonna be a little bit faster than doing it on the stove, but once I get them all situated, I can just throw them in the pit and just let them soak in some flavor while we're messing around with the other things. And plus that grate will be free for our searing. You know what I'm saying? That's the plan anyway, so. Guys, check it out. Man. Come on, look at that. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let me glove up for this. Let's do this. Blaze that pan with the new, oh shit, lost a couple. Let's burn that alcohol on it. Oh, that ain't nothing but flavor right there. Had about three soldiers go down on that, but hey, cost of doing battle, right? And we're gonna hit that, just covering the mushrooms. That's it. And then some garlic. She's typically about three, three cloves. I just don't have any fresh stuff right now, so and we're gonna mix that up. Put him back in here, just like so. Let that reduce down a little bit. 
So. And uh, once that gets reduced down, I'll give it a little stir and I'll take it. I'm just gonna throw it in the chamber, man. Let it keep warm. Nothing's gonna happen to it. I'll put it on the far side, 225 degrees isn't gonna do anything. That's pretty much a low simmer. You know what I mean? All right, guys, so our big steak, my steak, has hit 100. So I know the other ones are at least five degrees higher. So we're gonna pull them off. Grab my pan. We have our, uh, here, I'll show you here in a second. These guys. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And we have our pan for our dipping here. Butter just melted, we got our thyme in there. Got our garlic in there. I got that trimmings from the ribeye in there. I'll push out of the way. So we can dip and sear, you know what I'm saying? We'll steakhouse on this shit tonight. All right. I'm gonna let that go for a minute. Got my timing. I'm just gonna let them rest probably about 10 minutes. I wanna make sure my mushrooms are done. And more importantly, I wanna make sure my potatoes are where they need to go before I finish off my steaks. They're already at temp in there. It's only gonna help when we toss them on that eye heat, especially if the fact that they're thin you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna let them rest just let them hang out and uh then we're gonna toss them on the fire all right let's check it out see them all reduced down nice oh hey nothing but flavor in that thing right there guys look how rich that is yum all right so i'm gonna pull that off and I'm just gonna toss it right in the pit. So we're gonna go right over here with that guy. Try not to burn myself while I'm doing this. Okay, camera. Oh yeah. You know, we're gonna toss it right here. We got our liquid getting in there, some smoke or drip liquid or sear liquid. All that good stuff. Got a mushroom on here. I'm gonna put that in the fire and burn it. So. These are what our potatoes are coming out like. Do a quick little food porn walk around. See them guys? Open it up, saying hello. Softening up. Oh man, it's gonna be good. All right, so I'm gonna let them go. I don't know, a little bit longer. They're not quite there yet. Jump the gun on them. But uh, it'll be all right. So we're gonna let them go. We'll take them in. We'll stuff them with all our goodies. We'll come out here, we'll throw them back on, we'll sear off our steaks, and uh, we'll be eating good. I got some uh, some of my oil bread. It's essentially just French bread. Dab it in some uh, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, if that's what you got, and just put it in the oven. 425, man, until it gets nice and golden on the top, and then hit it with some, uh, what's up, babe? It's warm out here. It's in here, warm in here. I got two pits going. Um, and then just hit it with some everything bagel, man. It's awesome. So, all right, we'll be back. All right, guys, our potatoes are soft. They are ready to go. This is what we got going on here. Love this thing, man. Talk about versatility in an offset, guys. So we got this stuff. She's ready to go. We got our mushrooms in here, just soaking up flavor, keeping warm, breaking down a little bit more. I'm using the warming plate over here to keep our steaks warm, ready for the sear. I've only lost three degrees and that's outside at 65 degrees so here's our potatoes oh man i just checked them with the knife they're nice and soft and they're going to cook a little bit more too once we put everything in them. So we are going to pull these guys off with kid gloves man super super easy separate them so that way I have room to work with them. See what I mean about the bottoms? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna close that up, keep our air going, or our heat going, and I'm gonna run in there. Let's get these things stuffed with some goodies. That's, that's what we got. We got our hassle backs here. We got some prosciutto. 
This is a garlic and herb goat cheese, chives, and some mild cheddar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna start with our cheddar, because we're going back both of these up with some cheddar. And then I'm just gonna take this goat cheese, it's cold. So I am just going to slice it the best I can, trying to keep it together. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna cut a few of them here. Because this stuff cools quickly. I'm reminding you, seed theory and amazing dinner. Alexa, dismiss. So then I'm gonna take our goat cheese. Oh, sorry, prosciutto first, my bad. We're gonna take a piece of prosciutto here and I'm just gonna slightly kind of just roll it like this, you know, around the same size as what we're putting in. Cause we want a nice bite of that cause it will cook down a little bit. So we're gonna stuff that in there. I know it's getting buck wild, right? And then we're gonna take some goat cheese and we're gonna stuff that in there. And then we're gonna rinse repeat guys. You know what, actually let's back both of these goat cheese. Let's both back that goat cheese with prosciutto. I think that'll be a better idea because all that will kind of blend together in that bite. You know what I'm saying? Just makes more sense to me. And then we'll have ends of cheddar. Like so. Come on, man. You know what a damn good bit that potato is going to be? And then what we're going to do is once they melt down a little bit, we're going to hit them with some chives and let them finish off just like that. So I'm going to bang these guys out and we'll get them back out there. I guess we're back out here. Check them guys out. Come on, man. You know how good then we're gonna be? Holy snap, crackle, pop. All right. So, let's put these right back on here, right where they were. The best we can. Just like that. That's what I'm talking about. All right. In the meantime, check this out. 111 on the warming plate, man. It's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna open this guy up. So we're gonna need some access. All right, so let me push this around, get this stuff out of the way. So we have room for our dunk. that there we go that'll work all right take this guy out now now then potatoes are probably only going to take about 10 minutes so That's some searing power right there, guys. That's gonna be good. So what we're gonna do, we're going to, here, let me give you a wide view here first. You can see what's popping. I'm gonna take some big boy right here. I'm gonna drop her both sides in our searing liquid here. I'm gonna put him on the fire. Same thing with little guy. And same thing with this little ugly toe one. Just like that. Now we cooking. 
That's beautiful. Come on, guys. It's beautiful. All right, I'm going to let them sear off. Try not to make the video too long, like I said. So I'll put it on fast forward. How about that? All right, guys. So there we got them. Look at that. Oh, man. Beautiful. Now, just like finishing butter. Oh, man. See that? We are just going to give them one more dip. Just like that. And all that nice smoky flavor. Just like so. Even this ugly ass toe one. We're going to treat her like a gentleman. Best we can anyway. Come on, guys. Look at that. Man. That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm going to go. I'm just going to let them, I'm going to just throw a foil blanket on top. I'm going to let them just rest. I'm going to take my mushrooms in, do the same exact thing. And I'm going to finish up these potatoes, toss the shrimp on real quick, because I'm only take a second. So, because I, who's looking? Nobody's looking. I said, hey, you think you could stop and pick up some shrimp? Sure, no problem. I get shrimp, man. I mean, I want, you know, I like shrimp. The shrimp's like this, so. I'm hoping they don't fall through the grill grates. All right, so we're ready to pull our potatoes off. I'm tossing these shrimp, if that's even what I can call them. I have no idea, guys. Damn embarrassing, man. All right, I'll let them sear up. Now, for the fun part, I'm gonna try like hell to not destroy our hassle bags here. Come on, look at that. Here, I'll show you in a minute. Oh man, all that cheddar turned into a nice little bed of crusty cheese melted in there. Holy snap, guys. All right, get those shrimpies cooked. Check these things out, man. Damn. All right, I'm gonna All finish right, these shrimp up. We got our beautiful prosciutto, mild cheddar, goat cheese, Hasselback potatoes. Got our shrimpies. We got our, ooh, that's still warm. We got our beautiful, whiskey beef mushroom and onions and we got our reverse seared ribeyes so let me just do a quick cut into this thing if i can find where i put my knife at see what we got okay i'll cut right into this guy right here camera's washing it out that's beautiful that's what I'm talking about man what a good flavor and real talk I can't even say enough good stuff about that uh, a salt and pepper rub man seriously and if you if you know me you know I'm not a big fan of uh, I've just never found a a rub that I can buy that I enjoy and that shit is awesome man so all right guys that's it I know this is a long one long one but that's the versatility of an offset right there man um we did mushrooms on it we reverse seared our steaks on it we seared the steaks we just I mean come on man that's an awesome deal so all right that's it I'm gonna eat this is my last hurrah for a week so I'll still be around just won't be cooking I'm gonna have other people cooking for me for a week. So, 
but I will be around, you know, I'll be popping on, answering comments, whatever, you know, I'm around. So I still got to drink my coffee in the morning. You know what I mean? So anyway, stay safe out there guys. And uh, I'll be back later.